We've been busy getting our boxes ready for our mini city. Now it's time to add some decoration, like our windows. Okay guys, with our markers and our paint, we're going to draw some small squares for our windows on the side of the box. Okay guys, let's get started. Yeah! Sometimes it can be really hard to get straight lines on your windows, especially when you're using such a big brush. So when it's dry, you can get a marker and fix up those edges. So things to remember with your windows is that you can do them in all different shapes and sizes. We've got little squares and rectangles in the same one. And these ones, I've used some awnings, which is just a bit of paper, and I've just coloured the edge and stuck them on. I've got some ribbed paper, which I can use as a roller door or corrugated iron roof. So for this one, I'm going to make a little awning with it. So I'm going to cut out a rectangle. I'm going to measure to see how far I want my awning to go. So I think I want it just a little bit longer than the window. Now I'll just add my glue. We're using PVA glue to stick our awnings down. Make sure you use a contrasting colour so that it stands out. So for this one, I've made curtains and all of these is triangles cut out of cardboard and stuck on the inside. I'm going to show you a trick that we use in film and television. To make the most out of our boxes, I've done a different version on each side. So this side, I've done an apartment block. And then I've got an office building. A warehouse. And a garage. So when we go to make our film, we can just turn the box around and we have a whole new street. Welcome back to Get Arty. We are in the middle of building a film set where an alien invasion is going to happen. Now, what do we need if there's an alien invasion? Aliens! Of course! So, let's get making some. Now, I've just got a little marshmallow and I've drawn a face on in permanent marker and I've put three little push pins in for his legs. OK, well, let's get started, guys. Guys, you are doing such an awesome job. Ready. We're out here in Cabramatta today. Nathan's behind me building his miniature film set for his alien invasion movie. He's asked me to make an alien mothership. I'm here with David and Raymond. What do you think? It looks like a spaceship. Oh, well, that's the first test. Rocks. I think it looks like metal. Oh, yeah? What do you think it's made of? Rocks. Metal. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good guesses. Styrofoam. Unicorns. Unicorns. But I tell you what it's really made of. Yes. Styrofoam. Wow. Whoa. Can All right. it shoot lasers? It can shoot lasers. You should be wearing protective clothing when you sit in front of it. Okay. So what you might not know is that I do this as a real job. So we make huge spaceships for movie sets and sci-fi movies. So what we do is we use styrofoam, but we use huge bits of styrofoam and we stick them together with huge cans of foam and then we stick it all together and we just spray paint it all colours like this and we try and make styrofoam look like metal. Do you think it's worked? Yes. Would you guys ever think of making this at home? No. No? No? Nice. So, this is what we made it out of. An old TV box, old styrofoam pieces. We stick it all together with some expanding foam cool. and then we paint it all with some spray paint. Wow. And then we just stick bits of junk on there. So anyone can really do this at home. It's really easy. It's just up to your imagination. What do you think they are? Computer parts. Who knows? But that could be 
the control deck for a spaceship. Recycling. Recycling, yeah, it's all rubbish. I've got some electronics in there. And see this little spinny light? I'll show you how it works. So we'll take that front off. Oh, my. Oh, it fell off? Oh, yeah, again. Oh, lucky you're there. <laughs> if it breaks, it's your fault. <laughs> OK, in there, I've got an LED globe, a battery, and it's all hooked up to a little computer. Now, this is a little processor, and that tells the lights what to do. And you can plug this into your laptop or your computer at home, and you can tell the lights to do any colour or any pattern you can imagine. So this can work on lights this big, or you can put lights 100 metres long. Yeah. I'll go through it. This is really made out of junk. So here, that's old CD racks, Ooh. printer pieces, old piping, more CD racks. These are just drinking straws. We have some old fuses and an old plastic tray. And it's all recycled. All right, guys, you want to help me make this fly? Yeah. All right, feeling strong? Yes. yes. All right, let's carry it over to Nathan. Stick around, coming up next is Nathan's Alien Invasion. Marking out your city streets for your mini film set is super important and very time consuming. A few things to remember when you're marking it out are, measure out the width of your remote control cars. This will determine the width of the road. I find the best way to work this out is by using your car as a reference. Just place it down and make sure you leave about two centimetres of space on either side. You don't want the streets to be too narrow. The cars need enough room to turn around those tight corners without bumping into the buildings. I mark the outside of the road with a long unbroken line of tape and the middle line with little broken bits of tape all evenly spaced apart. Oh, and be sure to make two lanes. Oh, the more tape, the better. I actually ran out of tape during the setup. So we improvised and made a dirt road leading into a construction site, which actually gave me a really good idea for one of the scenes. Figure out how many buildings you have and measure how big they are. I placed at least three buildings facing the street per city block. If the blocks are too small, the buildings will not fit in. On my set, the corner of each block sits on a four-way intersection, giving me lots of options to film. Remember, you need to leave space between the building and the road for a footpath. This is where we'll add people, trees and street signs. Now all we need to do is dress the set. That's coming up next on Get Arty. Wow, Bianca, hey. the boxes look awesome. Thank you, I think we did a great job. You guys did an awesome job, but we are going to start filming around this main street right here. So what I want you to do is start lining the boxes up around this street, just basically in this area, because it's the start of the film. Okay? Too easy, great. Awesome, let's do it. Sweet. Come on, girls, let's come and put our buildings in. Yeah, cool. Okay, guys, time to dress this set. Now I'm thinking traffic lights on corners, trees between buildings, our witch's hats in the uh, construction area. Let's get going. I'm here in Cabramatta helping Nathan out build a miniature film set. But this is an alien invasion film, so we're going to need some alien spacecraft. And that's where I come in. OK, guys, this is a moment where we get our alien fleet to attack the city. Three, two, one, action! Shoot!
While the final touches are being put on this set, Jackie's been hard at work making the big, scary boss alien. What have you made, Jackie? Here he is, big what? marshmallow man. That is cool. So I cut up an old Duna cover and made rolls for the arms, body and legs. And then to make the big marshmallow effect, I used some rubber bands. Nice. And then for the feet, hands and head, I've used some polystyrene balls and I've put the marshmallows in with toothpicks. That is really cool. And his hair is the stuffing of the quilt. Put some fishing line on a stick, and he's ready to roam the streets. And his arms move when you walk. How cool is that? Now, the way we're going to film this big guy is get our camera as low as possible and slowly tilt up, making him feel like he's encroaching and really scary. Now, do you reckon we should get him to set? Let's do it. Let's go. Seb, Jackie, Bianca and the students have been hard at work making this mini film set. Now I'm going to show you how to film a high-speed action scene with a little alien twist. Here is what you need. A camera. This could be a DSLR camera or your mobile. Basically anything that shoots video. You also need two remote control cars, some aliens, some prop buildings and of course somebody to help you film it. Every film needs a reason for why the action scene is actually happening. Mine today is, of course, an alien invasion. I'm opening my film with a news bulletin which lets the audience know exactly what's happening very quickly and clearly. It's a big alien spaceship. Start by finding the perfect location. I found this rubber surface that looks a lot like a normal road. Mark out where you want your cityscape to be, add some buildings along the street, then add little details that make it look more realistic, like traffic lights, little people, and even the marks down the middle of the road. I actually feel like I'm in the middle of the main street. I'm just a little too big to be here. Move your building to suit your shot. This will allow you to get multiple takes on the one street, making it feel like a totally different street. You want to get that camera right down on ground level, which is going to make everything seem a lot bigger than what it is. I'm going to go with a handheld shot, which is going to make every shot a lot shakier, giving you the impression that everything's moving a lot faster than what it actually is. Yes, that was my final shot. Guys, get in here. Guess what? That is a wrap. That's awesome. I hope you guys enjoy our short film. We interrupt your broadcast to bring you breaking news. Aliens have invaded the world. Yes, you did hear that correctly. We now cross to our reporter on the field. Nathan, are you there? Hello, Jackie. Yes, I'm here on the streets, ready to bring you this breaking news story. It is pandemonium down here. Ah, the mothership is coming, and I can see a big marshmallow <laughs> shape. Alien coming our way, cameraman, we need to get out of here! Run! 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 Get in! <laughs> I think we lost them. What is that? <laughs>
behind the scenes and a few more tips on what we learned through this awesome project. <laughs> With three cameras, this short film still took a few hours to shoot. Oh, guys, we started in late afternoon, but light was fading fast. This is a really pretty time of the day for photography. But the producers were getting really nervous that we wouldn't get all the shots needed for the film. Okay, have a well, you go. So, if you're taking on a project like this, make sure you give yourself lots of time. And film it at a time of the day when the sun's not coming up or going down. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, cue car. <laughs> Maneuvering the remote control cars around the streets turned out to be pretty tricky. You're the worst day ever. The high-speed action-packed chase quickly turned into a car versus cardboard building standoff. <laughs> Obviously, the cars won to the detriment of our freshly designed and decorated set. Slowing the cars down was the answer. Then we can speed up the vision later. <laughs> what we needed was a bit of TV magic also known as cheating the shot. We turned the car into a puppet by attaching wire to the front and back, which allowed us to move it around. Then we filmed a series of shots from different angles, trying to hide the wire and puppeteers. Once you slow down the vision, it looks like the car is literally flying through the air. Abracadabra. We also needed to make the mothership fly, which was much heavier and much larger than the car. At first, we attached wire to the mothership and then attached that to a pole. This meant our arms and our legs could easily be out of the shot. But it was way too heavy. The wire slipped out of the tape and out of our hands. We then added more wires and just held them in our hands. But with enough people in some awkward positions for our puppeteers, we were able to get the spaceship into the right position. Similar with the small aliens on one string. If you are going to do this at home, be careful because the wire can hurt. Speaking of awkward positions, our camera guys had their work cut out for them. 
By the end of the shoot, there was a lot of sore knees and sore backs. Go. Timing and direction was very important. <laughs> when filming the small aliens landing, and the giant exploding alien, we first worked out where the props needed to land so they could all be seen by the camera. So slow it down and I'll go pro. That's what we Then the director would count us in so the action would happen all at the same time. And last but not least, help your actors out. Don't make them perform in front of large crowds. You know, crowds make me really nervous, OK? Hi, welcome to Get Arty. On today's show, hi, welcome to Get Arty. And on today's episode, we are teaming up. Hi, and welcome to Get Arty. On today's episode, we are teaming up to make. <laughs> and a big thank you to all our helpers on the day. You did a great job as an artist, prop maker, set designer, stylist. Producer and director. Thanks, guys. That's a wrap.